let's go on YouTube as well. Here we go. This podcast is the digital drop. And we're going to talk all about how you can become a big success with a gaming channel in 2019. Welcome to the Digital Drop. This is where I help online hustlers like you take back control of your digital strategy so you can do what you love for a living. And if you're not already familiar with me, uh, to figure out whether you should listen to my advice on how to grow a gaming channel, I co-founded the number one gaming network in the world, um, TGN. I've produced over 5,000 videos with my team that have gotten over a billion views. I've grown YouTube channels for gaming uh, to 100,000 subscribers, over 500,000 subscribers, over a million subscribers, gaming specific channels. And what I'm going to talk about today is the culmination of all of that experience that I've had since 2011. Oh, and by the way, I'm also helping gaming creators nonstop through my Patreon every single day. I live and breathe helping gaming creators grow, and I have for a living for years. So in the next 45 minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to grow your gaming channel in 2019, and I'm not just talking about YouTube only. Now, obviously, we're going to cover YouTube along the way. I'm also talking about Twitch. I'm also talking about Mixer, and I'm also talking about a huge opportunity for 2019, which is Facebook gaming. I'm going to walk you through the entire process of what you need to do to get your strategy ready, to prepare yourself, and to take your 2018 thinking and move it into 2019. You will be hard-pressed to find anybody on the planet that knows more than me about growing gaming channels, I challenge you to find anybody who's had more success with than me with helping creators grow gaming channels. Find somebody. I've never found anybody, all right? So there's your reasons to pay attention. If you understand every concept I tell you during this live stream and you implement it, I guarantee that you will grow in 2019 no questions asked. And there's also going to be questions from my patrons throughout the live stream. Gaming creators like Echo Gaming with 50,000 subscribers. We will address your question uh, later as well towards the end of this one. Let's freaking go. Okay, first things first. 2018 was a year that was all about the YouTube algorithm. YouTube changed a significant amount and the focus has been on YouTube for a really, really long time for gaming creators. However, there were big major shifts in 2018 that changed the game and changed how your success can look moving forward on YouTube. We're gonna talk about those 2018 changes. I'm gonna tell you about my 2019 predictions and I'm gonna tell you what you need to do to grow. Are you ready? All right, first things first, in 2018 on YouTube Gaming, YouTube Gaming went away, okay? So YouTube Gaming, the app, is now gone. The only thing that exists on YouTube anymore that is gaming specific is this landing page, youtube.com slash gaming. So what happened? Is gaming dead on YouTube? The answer to that question is no. But what you need to know is that this was a multi-year attempt in which I helped launch the YouTube gaming app. I was there on launch day. And the bottom line is that viewers on YouTube are not interested in watching gaming specific content only. They wanna watch some gaming content and then they wanna watch content across a number of other verticals too. Maybe they're gonna watch some news videos. Maybe they're gonna watch a lot of other content. So this was a major shift. And this is something that you guys need to keep in mind. So what does this mean? Does this mean gaming is dead on YouTube now that this app is gone? The answer to that question is a resounding no. So between YouTube and Twitch and Mixer and Facebook gaming, YouTube still has the largest gaming audience of any platform by a large margin. There are 200 million people watching gaming every single month on YouTube that is direct from the source. As opposed to Twitch, it's only 15 million. Okay, Mixer, it's so small they haven't even reported those numbers. And Facebook gaming, we're not sure precisely how many people are watching gaming content on Facebook, but I imagine it's about the same as Mixer, maybe a little bit larger. So YouTube still remains the number one mega player in gaming content. But wait, the reason why I'm recapping this whole YouTube gaming shutdown, if you will, is to indicate what is really going on with YouTube. The bottom line is that YouTube Gaming was here to emphasize live content. 
live streamers, how p folks that go live could potentially succeed on YouTube by going live. And the bottom line is that didn't work out. I ran a destination with TGN Squadron. It went all live. It had its own successes. It had about 400,000 subscribers. And the bottom line is live content does not grow YouTube channels. We figured that out in 2018. So you guys need to keep that in mind that if you want to run a live strategy, YouTube can only be partially live content. And that's a big reason why the app shut down is because the app was here to emphasize live content. It was basically, you know, inspired by, if you will, the Twitch app and the Twitch interface, if you guys remember the old YouTube gaming app. And the bottom line is that didn't work out. And it's because the YouTube algorithm wanted to emphasize videos more than it wanted to emphasize live content instead. So videos or another term that people use is videos on demand. So what does this mean? Does this mean you should never live stream to YouTube? Does this mean live streaming on YouTube is dead? No, that's not what it means. What it means is that the YouTube algorithm, when it has A versus B decisions in its choices of whether it's gonna show your video to somebody or whether it's gonna show somebody else's video to somebody, generally speaking, when you release a video versus when you release a live stream, viewers are going to click the video more often on YouTube than they are gonna click the live stream. And so therefore live streams are really, really tough to do to grow a channel. There's only one channel that I'm aware of on all of YouTube. His name's Alex Ramey Gaming that actually grew his YouTube channel from scratch to a significant size only doing live stream. So why am I telling you this? For 2019, do not think I'm going to go live on YouTube as my big strategy. That is just flat out not going to work. But does that mean that there's no viewership in terms of live on YouTube gaming? The answer to that question is no, there is a lot of viewership. I mean, look right now, I'm streaming this tutorial in the morning. There's 84,000 people watching PUBG, 66,000 with League of Legends, 63,000 with Fortnite. There's a lot of concurrent viewership here. However, if these channels that were live here on YouTube were only going live every single day, their channel would die. I did an entire live stream showing examples of channels that went live and are no and are no longer functioning or have declined in terms of their growth, etc. Um, one would be a, a game attack is one example, and this is not me hating on game attack. I love game attack, but they tried running an entirely live strategy on YouTube. They switched to Twitch. Now they're trying to come back to YouTube, and this is the same kind of story that you see with YouTube live streamers in the gaming vertical over and over again. They start on the platform, they get a little bit of traction, maybe something works, and then they flip-flop and they move between YouTube and other platforms. And the reason is YouTube is not built to support live content to grow your channel. So does this mean that you should not do any live content? No. So let's go to the chalkboard. Let's talk about what your content strategy could look like gaming gamers on YouTube. So if videos are what grow channels on YouTube, which is the case, there's, I've only, guys, post a channel in chat. If you've ever seen a channel only do live streams and grow on YouTube to a significant size, I've only seen one, Alex Ramey Gaming. And the strategy would be this. Let's say that this is your five days a week strategy on YouTube. Release one video, two videos, three videos, four videos, and then maybe once a week, you can do a live stream. And this will work out for you because these videos will grow your channel. And so you'll have mostly growth content on your channel. And then when you do your live stream, you can get the benefits of doing a live stream, of course, which is, as you know, making more money through super chats, channel memberships, and, and of course, growing your community with this little heart right here. And so you get all of those benefits of doing a live stream, but you don't get punished by the YouTube algorithm because you did that live stream. And so doing a video primary strategy on YouTube is the only strategy that is going to grow your gaming channel today, okay? So that's something that's really important to know. Don't look back in the past at 2018. Don't think YouTube gaming and live streaming on YouTube is the future. It is flat out not the future, okay? So if you do want to do a live streaming primary strategy and you say, AWOL, I don't like 
I don't like, oh, what about typical gamer? Okay, that's a great point. What about typical gamer is the question here in Echo Gaming saying he's one of the, he's the top live streamer on YouTube gaming. Didn't he grow through doing live streaming on YouTube? And the answer to that question is no, he did not. So just because you see a creator today doing something and they are successful with it today, doesn't mean that they got there by doing it. So let's pull up Typical Gamer as an example right now. Typical Gamer, a great guy. I've met him many times. Um, he was on a panel with me at PAX East once. Top-notch live streamer on YouTube. Let's show his channel to talk about what's going on here. So if you look at his channel right now, his live streams are getting hundreds of thousands of views a pop on YouTube. Good job. I consider him to be the king of live on YouTube. But guess what? He didn't grow his channel to this size because of live streaming. Let's take a look back in time. Guys, you can't look at what somebody is doing on their gaming channel today and copy that and think that that's going to make you successful. That is a path to failure. This is what he did to grow. He made videos on his channel on YouTube about modern, look, this is, this is literally it, about modern warfare, Red Dead Redemption. He made Assassin's Creed videos. He did covered all of these games for years in videos, 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 videos. Look at all these videos. And these grew his channel from zero to one million subscribers. Then, once he reached the one million subscribers mark, he was able to start, as you can see, he started going live a little bit and doing long videos about five years ago. He got in early on YouTube gaming. Then once he had a million subscribers and he had a giant audience, then he could go live and he could get a big, big boost in viewership because he already had the viewership to do so. So what is the advantage of going live on YouTube then? Is there any advantage at all? And the advantage is the advantage that typical gamer has. That when you search for a particular search term, I'll type in Fortnite right now as an example, oh bam, there it is. A live stream that is currently live and has a boatload of viewership will get search discovery. This is the main way that people will discover your content if you're live on YouTube. But you have to be the king of something that is highly searched in order to get this benefit like Nick is right now with his 41,000 concurrence. If you do not have that massive audience already, then you don't get that benefit of going live on YouTube. This is something that's really, really important for everybody. Remember, you love the chalkboard, awesome. I'm glad you guys like the chalkboard. So keep that in mind. So you're either the king of something big or you are nothing when it comes to YouTube live streaming. Well. What if I want to do a live streaming strategy? Should I just not be on YouTube at all? The answer to that question is no, it's okay to be on YouTube and to live stream 100% of the time if you use a tool like this, restream.io. I'm restreaming right now. So if you want to go 100% live, just add YouTube as a restreaming avenue and just restream your stream to YouTube in addition to Twitch and Mixer and Facebook gaming and all of the other avenues. But just keep in mind that your live streams on YouTube are not going to grow your channel really at all. Only video content is going to grow your channel, which leads me to my next point. How is it that video content is going to grow your channel? Why is it only video content that is going to grow your channel? And Tom Nash is here in chat and he knows the answer why. Tom Nash right up there, YouTube expert. Tom Nash, thanks for stopping by. It's because YouTube's algorithm only rewards two triggers. Those two triggers are your click-through rate and your average view duration. Those are the only two triggers that matter, my friends. No other triggers matter. It doesn't matter if you go live. It doesn't matter if you have high comments. It doesn't matter if you have high likes. It doesn't matter if you have high clicks on your cards. None of those things matter. There's only two things that trigger views. It's a high click-through rate and a high average view duration. And guess what, my friends? Videos have a higher click-through rate than live streams do and a lot of the time they have a higher average audience retention as well in, co in combination with that high click-through rate. Now, why is that the case? Why do, here, let me turn the light down a little bit, there we go. Why is that the case? 
Well, that's the case because most viewers, when they're sitting down, they're picking up YouTube on their phone with phone, uh, mobile traffic is growing by a significant margin, or they're sitting down at home or they're doing whatever. They don't have time when they come to YouTube to sit down and watch a 45 minute to a one hour long piece of content. They just don't. And the YouTube algorithm knows that. And so when you go live on your channel and you're going live for a significant amount of time, the YouTube algorithm is only going to serve your live stream to a small amount of your viewers and most of your viewers will not see that live stream. That is why gigantic channels on YouTube like IGN, for example, with 12 million gaming subscribers will only get like 500 concurrent viewers on their channel. That's why you see gigantic channels with millions and millions and millions of subscribers go live on YouTube and they're under a thousand concurrent viewers. And the bottom line is it's because people don't want to click that kind of content and commit that level of time. YouTube wants eyeballs as long as possible. Yes, it does. But don't think because YouTube wants eyeballs as long as possible that that means that you, that live streams are going to blow you up because they absolutely are not. So let's talk about the other factor here. How do you pick a good game in 2019? How do you do it? Well, there's only a few types of games and a few types of opportunities that are actually going to get traction on YouTube. And so keep this is the this is the real deal. First of all, Google Trends is the place to look to find out whether if you make gaming content, whether it's going to get traction. If Google Trends tells you that that particular game or that particular topic is not interesting to anyone, then you aren't going to get traffic off of it and you aren't going to end up uh, succeeding with it. That's the bottom line. So let me type in a couple search terms here into this and let's talk about the attributes of a successful uh, title. So let's go ahead and do YouTube search. Let's go ahead and go worldwide to understand the interest in different topics, and let's go. Um, so I'm gonna type in Mobile Legends, a big mobile game. We're also going to type in, uh, what else should we do here? Um, let's also type in uh, Fallout 76, okay? And so the, t the attributes that you need to be looking at if you want to pick a successful game on YouTube, on Mixer, on Facebook gaming, on Twitter gaming, on any gaming platform is it needs to have, um, first of all, it needs to be multiplayer. So if the game is not multiplayer, people are not going to watch it. So if it's not multiplayer, it is a stinker. Leave that game immediately. It's not going to get views on YouTube. I'm not joking. If it doesn't have regular updates and DLC, it's not going to get uh, views on YouTube in the long run, and it's only gonna be a spike trend that dies right after it comes out, like God of War or something like that. So if it doesn't have updates and DLC, it is a stinker, get the hell out of there. If it has PVP elements, it is a really, really huge boon, and you can grow from games that have PVP elements because it gives you an unlimited number of content possibilities. And another attribute that you're gonna want with games that you're covering on YouTube or any other platform is if it makes modding available. Because if you can mod a game, that means that you can change it any number of ways and get an unlimited amount of content from that game. Take Grand Theft Auto, for example. Uh, GTA has like, play as the Hulk, play as Batman, play as this, use this airplane, use this car, use XYZ. That modding that was in GTA is what helped make it successful. But here's the huge thing that I want you guys to keep in mind for 2019, okay? Just because a good a game is good doesn't mean that it is going to grow your channel. This is something that is a really huge thing in 2019 versus years past. Here's what happened in the gaming industry. There are so many games that are coming out on a monthly basis that competition has increased by a ridiculous amount. There are like 20 AAA games that are coming out this month on any month, even the quiet month, it's four to five AAA games. There are mobile games flying off the shelves. The competition's never been higher. So that, that doesn't matter to you, right? Because you're not making a game. What does matter to you is because competition is higher, that means that developers have to break through the competition somehow to get interest in their game. It's not your job as a creator to create interest in a game, it's the job of the marketing department of that particular game to create interest. So in 2019, if you're looking at a game and that game does not look like it has 
it's going to have and currently has a massive marketing budget, it is going to be a nothing burger on YouTube, on Facebook gaming, on Twitch, on Mixer, anywhere. YouTubers cannot make games popular. It is not, creators cannot make games popular. Streamers cannot make games popular. Money makes games popular. So indie games are gonna get you nowhere. I'm sorry, I love indie games, but they're gonna get you nowhere. And if you see games being released by major developers, but you're not seeing the ads, you're not seeing the spike on Google Trends, you're not seeing that game have a giant Facebook account, a giant Twitter account, really expensive looking promotional videos on YouTube, etc. that game is a nothing burger. It will go nowhere for you to build your channel. That's the bottom line. Only multi-million dollar budgets in terms of marketing are able to punch through the noise and to grow and to actually get interest. And this isn't me being mean. It doesn't matter how good the game is. Great games get released every day that are nothing burgers for creators like you to grow your channel. It doesn't matter how good the game is. It matters how much money they drop into marketing. That is something that is critically important for you to know that is going to determine whether the games you're covering on your channel can will help your channel become successful. What you're doing as a creator is you aren't creating interest in those games, you are retaining interest in those games as they grow. That's your role here. It's their job to spend the money to make people interested. It's your job to keep people interested once they're already interested. So you need to change your thinking. That's different than it was in the way of the past. That's different than developers used to think about it in the past. You cannot make a game popular and you cannot hop on board of a game that doesn't have a multi-million dollar marketing budget. It's just the bottom line. There are too many competitors. And the reason why I say that is not to be mean to indie developers and small developers that don't have money. It's because there are multiple games released every month right now that have multi-million dollar marketing budgets. So the options are unlimited, okay? So when you're picking your game, you're gonna go to Google Trends, type in your game, make sure it has PVP or, mul or multiplayer, it has modding, it has a multi-million dollar marketing budget, and it has uh, constant updates and DLC coming up. Once it meets those basic criteria, then you go to Google Trends, go ahead and select Worldwide, select YouTube Search, and compare it to other titles that you know are popular on YouTube to see how popular it is. Did you know, for example, the mobile game Mobile Legends, which is a League of Legends ripoff, is currently more than double as popular on YouTube as Fallout 76, which hasn't come out yet, but Fallout 76 has a mega marketing budget, a multi-million dollar marketing budget. Did you know this mobile game is actually twice as popular on YouTube as Fallout 76 currently? Let Google Trends tell you the truth about what's popular. Don't just think you know what's popular. It's really, really important to look at this data to understand. Then once you have this data and you've chosen a game, what you can do is you can go look at that individual game, select top and or select rising. Select rising to find out what kinds of videos and streams you could be making on your channel to win and to grow. And then go ahead and select top to pick out the topics that are going to be those big search topic uh, terms that you can drop on your YouTube video and what have you to be discovered to get views there. That's the basic of Google's trends here in selecting the best game. But wait, that's just YouTube, my friends. What about the other platforms in 2019? So 2018 was all about YouTube videos and it was all about Twitch streaming. Those were the big two opportunities. Now, my friends, the growth opportunities are now on Mixer, and, which is Microsoft's platform that they're dumping millions and millions and millions into, and Facebook gaming. And an article just came out recently, which was just one study, but this study showed that Facebook is actually getting more watch time than YouTube in terms of video. So for those of you that are laughing at Facebook gaming, being like, nobody likes gaming on Facebook, <laughs> guess what? They do. 
And there are live streamers that are streaming full-time on Facebook gaming right now that are getting thousands of concurrent viewers right now. And they are the ninjas, the Dr. Disrespects, the PewDiePies, and the Ali A's of tomorrow. How do I mean, why? Why is that going to be the case in 2019 and beyond? And the same thing is the case here with Mixer, my friends. Don't underestimate these. It's because Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg said in a statement that Facebook is going to be an entirely video platform by the early 2020s an entirely video platform by the early 2020s. And that means that there are 2 billion viewers on Facebook. And if you think that young people are not on Facebook watching gaming content, think again. Go to facebook.com slash Facebook gaming and look at all of the live streams that have thousands of concurrent vi vi uh, viewers. Like look at Darkness429, for example. We've analyzed him on the channel. He's live right now. Let's just see. 1,600 concurrent viewers right now on Facebook gaming. So if you're trying to blow up in 2019, what is going to be a better strategy for you? Competing on the most competitive platforms, YouTube and Twitch, or considering expanding into new platforms that are growing and are less competitive like Mixer and Facebook gaming. And the obvious answer is go where there's less competition, especially if you already know how to make fantastic gaming content and you're struggling to get traction on those platforms. The competition on YouTube and on Twitch is growing faster than the viewership and demand is. And so what that means is as every day passes on platforms like YouTube and platforms like Twitch, it becomes more and more difficult for you to grow. Whereas on Mixer, because the viewership is growing faster than the creators are going to that platform, that means that every as every day passes, at least at the moment I'm doing this live stream, it's becoming easier and easier to grow on these two platforms. So for those of you that are YouTube primary or Twitch primary creators, I recommend spending 20% of your time experimenting with Mixer and with Facebook gaming in 2019. Now, how can you grow on these platforms? How is that possible? Why am I talking about Facebook gaming? You guys are watching that are watching this in 2018 might be laughing at me. Come back at this time in 2019 and you're going to go, you're going to be beating yourself up going, holy crap. Why didn't I get on Facebook gaming? I saw my friends. I saw other people that were on YouTube go over there. I thought it was a joke. And guess what? Now they're gigantic. That's what happens. I've been here before. I've been here before. Back in 2012, 2013, when Twitch was starting to emerge, when YouTube is starting to emerge, and people didn't know whether gaming was going to be a big thing. They saw that it was getting some views. They weren't sure whether it's going to go over the edge. And I was telling creators, this is your time to jump on board with gaming channels. This was 2012, 2013, somewhere in there. And come join our network, blah, blah, blah. I was creating a YouTube gaming network called TGN. And this is your time to invest. Get in early because the competition is low and because the opportunity is high. And the creators that got in in those early stages, 2012, 2013, are now the gigantic multi-million subscriber channels that you guys are mentioning in chat right now, like Typical Gamer, etc. We are on the edge of that type of growth opportunity right now with Facebook Gaming and with Mixer. And so believe me or don't believe me, I've been here full-time analyzing this as my full-time job since then. And I'm telling you that these two platforms are the next YouTube and Twitch level opportunity. And just by being there, and just by being somewhat competent while you are there releasing content, you will be way more successful than ramming your head up against the most competitive live platform, Twitch, and the most competitive video platform, YouTube. Now, am I saying abandon YouTube, abandon Twitch? No. So let me clarify that for 2019 strategies. YouTube still presents the biggest opportunity to grow your video strategy in 2019. So if you decide to go live on Facebook gaming, or you decide to go live on Mixer, or you decide to go live on Twitch, 
feel free to, cr to create video content from those live streams and to release it on YouTube. YouTube still has hands down the best search and discovery on the planet for videos. Facebook doesn't even come close. Twitch doesn't even come close. Mixer doesn't even come close. YouTube is still absolutely king for gaming videos. However, for live streaming, there are other platforms that present a major opportunity such as uh, Mixer and Facebook gaming, okay? So do not abandon YouTube. I think every creator should still be running a YouTube video strategy in 2019, okay? And whether that's chopping up highlights from your live streams, whether that's recording a uh, tactical commentary during your live stream, whether that's chopping up a funny moments from your live stream, whatever it may be, these videos on YouTube will work. Whether you're recording tutorial videos, etc., YouTube still has the best discovery and it still has 200 million active monthly viewers for gaming content, okay? But the live opportunities are those other platforms that I talked about a moment ago. But wait, there's more. So in 2019, how is it that you're going to grow on YouTube versus being able to grow on these other platforms? There is going to be a few completely different strategies. And let me tell you the main factors that are going to generate your success on each of these platforms. And guess what? The main factors of success on YouTube, on Twitch, on Mixer, and on Facebook gaming are different for each platform. So don't try to focus on the exact same things on each platform, focus on different things as a gaming creator. So thing number one on YouTube is the, the two things you need to focus on to increase your traction on YouTube is your click through rate, basically the number of times that people click your video per every time YouTube gives your video a shot, and your average view duration, increasing that retention percentage and increasing the amount of minutes watched that you get on your channel. Those are the only two things that matter at growing on YouTube. No other factors matter at all. Okay, but the other platforms completely differ from that because YouTube's algorithm is different than the algorithms of these other platforms. If you want to be successful on Twitch, it is not click-through rate and it is not average view duration that is going to make you successful on Twitch. It's actually the amount of time that you broadcast on Twitch and the other factor is the value that you are providing viewers while you are broadcasting on Twitch. Those are the two factors that are going to grow you on Twitch. And so what, am I, what do I mean? The more you are live on Twitch, the more that you can absorb viewership from your competitors on Twitch. That's obvious, right? Everybody knows that. But that is the number one way to grow on Twitch is just being live longer than your competitors. Okay, but the other factor is the value that you're providing during your stream versus your competitors. And so I've talked about this before, but if you can beat other people to the punch to bring something new, that will grow you on Twitch. If you can be the best at something or bring something that is the best or the worst on Twitch, that will grow your Twitch avenue. If you can do something unique like wearing cosplay or doing a ghost pepper challenge or doing something in a game that nobody's ever seen before, that will grow your Twitch channel. If you can do a challenge, I mentioned ghost pepper challenge, that's more of a challenge, but if you can do a challenge on your stream, noob to pro, ghost pepper challenge, um, I'll shave my head if XYZ, those types of live streams will grow your channel as well. And the last one is is if you are just that resource on Twitch that's always there to help people learn about the game, learn how to get better, and you can be there to help them with their tactics, their strategy, their gameplay, their builds, all that stuff, all of these values can grow you on Twitch and every other platform, but especially on Twitch, because that value is going to be what sets you apart from your competitors when you're streaming as long as possible. So bringing that value in every single live stream on Twitch will help set you apart, but only if you are live streaming an ungodly amount on Twitch. I would say there's a six hour daily minimum on Twitch to grow today. I would try to go eight to 10 if you can. If you can go above that, that's even better, okay? So that's how you grow on Twitch right here. And, but wait, there's more. So if you want to grow on Mixer, it is exactly the same, same thing in terms of growing on Mixer, but 
The big difference between Mixer and Twitch is that Mixer is far less competitive. So you don't need to invest as much time as you do on Twitch because it is less competitive. You can do four hour live streams, for example, on Mixer and grow your avenue because competition is lower. Whereas on Twitch, you need to go six to 14. On Mixer, you can do two to four because competition is low. But the same principles apply to growing on Mixer. Question from Rich Divine in chat asks, and it's a very relevant question, if you use a multi-stream approach, would you recommend signing up with Twitch's affiliate program? Um, I recommend signing up with affiliate, if you're gonna go multi-streaming, I recommend signing up for uh, an affiliate program directly so that you can run that affiliate program. He's talking about when you recommend a product and then somebody buys it and then you get a commission off of it. That's what he's talking about with affiliate programs. I recommend signing up for it directly so that you can use that affiliate program on all of the avenues that you're restreaming to without any sort of exclusivity problems with Twitch or any other avenue, right? So let's say you're running an affiliate program for Razer mice or something like that. And you're trying to sell Razer keyboard and mice. I'm just throwing it out there as an example. You wanna be able to sell those on YouTube, on Mixer, on Twitch, on Facebook gaming, on Periscope, everywhere that you're gonna mob crush, good game, everywhere that you're going to be streaming without any exclusivity problems because your viewership across all of those avenues will probably want to buy those products. So why limit your revenue opportunities by doing an exclusive deal with one platform that that deal you're doing with one platform, whether it's affiliate, whether it's any other kind of deal, um, be sure that that deal that Twitch or YouTube or Facebook gaming is offering you is extremely lucrative and is just so good that you can't pass it up. Otherwise, going multi-platform is the way to go in 2019. But wait, there's more. Let's talk about Facebook gaming, which is completely different than YouTube. So YouTube success is click-through rate and average view duration. Mixer success is time plus value. Twitch success is time plus value. But what about Facebook game, gaming? So Facebook gaming is a totally different animal. And it is all about Facebook, we'll put FG here for Facebook gaming. Growing on Facebook gaming is different. It is all about how much money you invest and how effectively, this is supposed to be a target here, how effectively you spend that money on Facebook. Um, that is, and this is an arrow going into a target there. There we go. How effectively you spend that money on Facebook gaming will determine how successful you are on Facebook gaming. That is the main factor. The other factor for success on Facebook gaming is of course, the amount of time that you broadcast However, you, bear, you don't have to broadcast that much on Facebook gaming actually in comparison to even Mixer and Twitch because if you have money, you can pay to get exposure on Facebook and to grow your audience in a relatively short amount of time um, with a relatively small amount of money because competition on Facebook gaming is low. And as you guys know, Facebook is designed from the ground up for people to pay money and then grow. But wait, it's not just paying money to grow. There's also organic growth that can be had, the fly in my face, and organic growth that can be had on Facebook for free. So there is still a free amount of traffic that you can get from Facebook, especially as a small or startup creator, where if you stream on Facebook and you tag that particular game, because there's so little creators on Facebook, but there's so many viewers, if you just live stream on Facebook and you tag a game, you could like instantly be a top three creator for a game like that just by streaming on Facebook. You could instantly be the king of some individual game on Facebook just by being there. But that's only going to last for today. That's only going to last for the beginning part of 2019. As we get towards the end of 2019, Facebook is going to become more popular as thousands and thousands of gaming creators pour into Facebook to take care to take advantage of that opportunity. And then that opportunity will be gone. So if you streamed on Facebook gaming today, you would be able to yield that growth today, but by the end of 2019, that opportunity is going to begin to dry up. So I'm gonna be really straight up with you guys about that, okay? To succeed on Facebook gaming, you need to spend money to accelerate that growth. That's the way it is. So 
when you're figuring out what platform to go on, when you're trying to grow your gaming channel, when you're trying to figure out what strategy to use, I've laid out all the groundwork for you here. I've laid out all the basic thinking that you guys should have. It's all about choosing the right platform, choosing the right kind of content that you're going to create, and most importantly, choosing how you spend your two resources that are available to you in 2019. And what are those two resources? Your resources are time, and your other resource is money. And so how do you want to invest your time and your money as a gaming creator in 2019? If you have tons of time, unlimited time, and maybe you're a young person, maybe you're single, maybe you just wanna go hustle, you have time on your hands, then look at going on a Twitch live strategy and look at going at a Mixer live strategy, that time investment will be unbelievably powerful for you to grow in 2019. If you have money, investing in Facebook gaming is absolutely the right decision. You can get tens of thousands of not garbage Madagascar followers here. You can get tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers for a relatively small amount of money if you have money. And so if you have money, I recommend investing in Facebook gaming in 2019. But where does YouTube sit in the mix? Where does YouTube sit in the mix for 2019? And the answer to that question is very clear. YouTube is kind of above all of these other opportunities, if you will, and YouTube kind of sits up here. And if you have time or you have money, you still need to be on YouTube no matter what. And what should you be doing on YouTube? You should be releasing videos on YouTube in 2019 with your time. And if you have money, you can invest into editors to make those YouTube videos better and to make them um, more um, entertaining and what have you so you can crank out more videos. But I feel that YouTube's audience is still so large that it still transcends any growth opportunities that you're gonna see on Mixer or on Facebook Gaming in 2019, just simply because there are still 200 million viewers on YouTube for gaming, and you can still capture those through the most intelligent and most powerful machine learning algorithm for video of all time, okay? And if any of you guys are out there, feel free to drop your questions in chat. I have just a few minutes to answer a few more questions about this. I know I've been dropping like high level part, uh, information and high level gaming growth strategy on you right now. I get into all of the details on other live streams, by the way. But here's a question from Echo Gaming, uh, one of my fantastic patrons that pays me uh, to coach them and to help them grow their gaming channel. The question is, they're uploading two videos per day. By the way, they're a gaming creator with 50,000 subscribers. They're uploading two videos per day with a three hour gap between those two uploads. Is the first, is the second video hurting your views and exposure on the first video? And should you spread the gap out further is the question uh, from Echo Gaming. That is a fantastic question. Um, I love that question. So what I would do when you're planning releasing gaming content on YouTube, you need to be thinking about the viewer behavior of the people on your channel and when they watch your content most often. So let's say you are, you're a gaming creator, obviously, and you make gaming content about mobile games. So people that have mobile games are probably, oh wow, Echo, I'm sorry, he doesn't have 50,000 subscribers, he's got 70,000 subscribers now. My apologies, you are blowing up, amigo. So think about their viewer behavior because the YouTube algorithm will suggest content to viewers based on when they're going to watch that content. So, and what device they're on. So this is how you make scheduling decisions. YouTube's algorithm, will deliver videos based on what day it is, what time of day it is, how long your video is, and what device they're watching it on. So when I say you need to look at your viewer behavior uh, in terms of figuring out when your view, you should be releasing your content on your channel, that's what I mean, that's all viewer behavior. Do they wanna watch a long video or a short video? Do they wanna watch on their bathroom break at work or when they get home at night? Are they gonna be watching on their TV or watching on their phone? Are they gonna watch your videos on Saturday or Sunday or are they more likely to watch on Tuesday? 
All of these factors are taken into account by YouTube's machine learning algorithm. So when you're deciding whether to release your videos, think less of it as a, should I do a three hour gap between the uploads and think about when they're actually going to watch the content. Okay. So, if, and I would release your content two hours before you think the prime time of them wanting to watch your content is. So let's say that you think that your viewers will watch your videos while they're on bathroom break, for example, at school or at work at 12 p.m. And then you think the other slot that they would want to watch videos at would be like 9 p.m., maybe after they've wound down after their day and they're just like playing some mobile games at home. This is just an example. Anybody can use this as an example to think about your release strategy and when you should be releasing your videos. Let's say that you estimate that's what their viewer behavior will be. Bathroom break or break at work and lunch break, and then at night when they're chilling in bed playing mobile games or whatever, right? You should be releasing your content then at 10 a.m. as your release time, and you should be releasing your second piece of content at 7 p.m because you're predicting their viewer behavior. Now, why do you need to be this specific about when you release your videos and how you release your videos on YouTube? It's because it's so incredibly competitive and that's why uh, YouTube's algorithm takes all of those additional factors into account like time, device, et cetera, et cetera. I would use this thinking when determining when to release your videos, not just a set release schedule, Echo Gaming. Test these different release times, test the release time for 30 days, then measure results for another 30 days with another time. Compare results in YouTube groups and analytics and see which times give you the biggest punch in viewership in your real-time analytics and constantly be assessing that and use a scientific process to make those determinations. Cool? I hope that answered your question, Echo. I love you, man. You are such a hustler. I love your channel. The Retrex. How do you pronounce your name properly? Is it Retrex or Retrix? Uh, anyway, question from Retrex, a fellow gaming creator who contacted me on Twitter. It's good to see you, amigo. Um, how does YouTube video momentum work? These are all gaming creator questions. That's why I'm including them in this live stream. How, do, how does YouTube video momentum work when one video does really well and gets recommended and then you upload another video and it tends to do well and better than usual? This is a great question for gaming creators uh, especially. So what happens is your video releases will build momentum. The algorithm has, it's retrex. Oh, it's not retrex. It is retrex. Okay, got it. It build, does build momentum. So let's, let me show you here on the whiteboard. And uh, by the way, yeah, this I may only have time for one other question, okay? So this is video number one that was released on your channel. This is video number two that's released on your channel. And this is video number three in this example. And this is me explaining how the YouTube algorithm works with your videos, okay? So you release, here, let me do little circles. You release video number one. And video number one has a relatively high performance in terms of your click-through rate and your watch time. That is going to provide a boon for the performance of video number two, okay? So there is a momentum factor there. If this video does better than average or above average, there will be video momentum that's given to video number two and will help push video number two in the algorithm. YouTube does this because it's chasing viewer behavior. If somebody releases a piece of successful content, maybe they're onto something, maybe they're trending, maybe they're more relevant. The algorithm wants to give them an extra shot and suggest them in the future versus somebody who's trending down. But let's say video number two does particularly poorly. That means that when you release video number three, it's actually going to decrease the performance of video number three. If say video number two did less than average uh, in terms of your performance. So if your current video does better than average, your next video, YouTube will give it more impressions to test it out. If you're a video that you release right now, it did lower than average, your next video will be given a lesser number of impressions for YouTube's algorithm to test it out. So that's how video momentum works. That's how channels can release a super successful video, then do another one, then do another one, all of a sudden, doom, 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 doom. They blow up on YouTube with their video content. Momentum is real, and momentum is built directly into the YouTube algorithm, uh, and the algorithm will give extra impressions 
impressions to videos that are released after a successful video, and it will give less impressions to a video that's released after a stinker of a video. And here's another question from another patron, Relia. Thank you for your financial support on my Patreon, uh, for supporting me with my coaching services. This one is, is it bad to post a three hour live stream? This is an amazing question. Is it bad to post a three hour live stream on your YouTube channel? And does it hurt VOD momentum? You've debating on whether to leave live streams private after streaming or not. That's a fantastic question. So a three plus hour live stream is generally speaking not going to help your channel grow, okay? So that's something that you guys need to keep in mind. So if you have successful videos being released on your channel and then a three hour live stream hits your channel right after that, it, it is going to decrease the performance on your channel at the very least by a small amount. However, before you say, well, I'm gonna make all my live streams private rather than public, Live streams can help grow a channel, assuming that you package the live streams effectively and you package the live streams as a video. So what I mean by that is, and this is what Typical Gamer does. Typical Gamer doesn't just play a game on YouTube. He doesn't just like fire up a live stream and play a game and end of story. Typical Gamer designs his live streams to be entertaining videos. What do I mean by that? When he live streams, he makes these ice cold killer thumbnails and titles that are very, very specific with specific content in them that is like, it, it looks like a clickable video, basically. So this one is the new Halloween hollow head, et cetera. It's a new piece of content in Fortnite that looks like a video that you could click on. Then once you click on his live streams on YouTube, this is master strategy right here by Typical Gamer. He doesn't have chat on the screen. He doesn't have, um, you know, pop-ups for donos. He doesn't have all this, you know, garbage and UI elements. This live stream is designed to be watched as a video later. It's designed to be watched as a video later. So, and when he's doing his commentary, he's commenting on the game. He's commenting as if he's just recording a let's play, but it happens to be live. He's not doing all of these like one-on-one -on -one conversations with chat that and like inside jokes and stuff that you couldn't understand if you watch this later as a video. And so what he does is he designs all of his live streams as if they were a video and then they get released and they get the performance of a video. So this is next level strategy, okay? So if you guys wanna check out the best YouTube gaming live streamer, check out Typical Gamer. I'll link him in chat right now, check him out. And the reason why his live stream strategy on YouTube is working is because he's designing his live streams as if they were to be watched as videos. And this ties into my first point that I made about YouTube in 2019. Videos grow channels on YouTube, not live streams. However, if you're next level, and if you are an extremely experienced creator that's made thousands of pieces of content, you could create a live stream that is viewable as a video. He ignores chat. He absolutely, for the most part, ignores chat, and it totally works. His chat loves him. He gets between 10,000 to 20,000 concurrence in every piece of content. Watch Typical Gamer. You're like, oh, well, I don't want to ignore chat. That's cool. You don't have to ignore chat. That's fine. Um, you can pay attention to chat. Just keep in mind, that makes for an unbearable video viewing experience later. If you're talking too much with chat, you're not explaining the context, and you're not making relevant, making it relevant to the viewer that's not watching you live. That's it. That's how you grow a gaming channel in 2019. Thank you so much for watching. If you didn't catch the whole thing, go back and watch individual parts. I dropped about 20 different strategy items that I had bullet pointed over here on you guys. Make sure you go back and understand all of these concepts. Don't just memorize the concepts, understand the concepts and make good decisions to spend your time and your money most effectively in 2019 to chase that dream of becoming a gaming content creator for a living. My name is Andrew Wall. Thank you so much for watching The Digital Drop and I'll be back live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time to keep cranking it out, to keep Keep giving free advice and to keep helping gaming creators succeed because that's what I love to do. I've been doing that for a living and I want to help you do it for a living as well. Thanks guys. Adios amigos. Keep gaming and keep being awesome.